Plants vs Zombies 2 has a lot of sedium plants, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot. 72 in total. With this amount of sediums to choose from, how are you meant to know which ones to spend your time and resources pursuing, or which ones to avoid? Well luckily for you, I've put together this video to go through the best and worst sedium plants in Plants vs Zombies 2. If you don't know what a sedium is, it's a type of premium plant that can be obtained with seed packets. These seed packets are obtained from a variety of places in the game, including Arena Mode, Penny's Pursuit Mode, Piñatas, and Shop Offers. In my previous videos from this top 5 best and worst plant series, I revolved my rankings mostly around the adventure mode. However, considering most if not all of the sediums were released after the adventure mode finished, and are designed around Arena and Penny's Pursuit, I'll mostly be ranking them relative to those latter two modes this time around. Let's start the ranking. Before I explain why each plan is ranked where, I should explain how this ranking worked, because it was a little different to my last videos. Since I'm not very well educated about a lot of the sediums, I'm not gonna lie, I've never used half of these, I decided to get some help from you guys. I put out a Google form for you to share your opinions to help me rank these plants. This list will be a combination of the results of the poll and, where appropriate, my personal opinion. So if you radically disagree with any of these picks, feel free to explain in the comments. Just don't shoot the messenger because as I explained, I've never used a couple of these plants before making this video, so they're purely on the list because you guys voted for them. One of these particular plants is Seafloor, which I'll finally get to now. Seafloor shoots a bubble down its lane that can pierce through 5 targets. Its plant food ability shoots one large bubble that knocks zombies back and explodes for more damage. When on water, Seafloor is attacking plant food projectiles are also fired in the lanes above and below it. It's also granted a small boost in its damage stat. So from what I can tell, it's kind of like a worse cactus that needs to be planted on water to actually be useful. However, in game modes where you're most likely to come across this plant, like Penny's Pursuit and Arena, there are rarely ever levels that actually have water. Arena basically never features water, and Penny's Pursuit only features water in events that are aquatic or big wave beach themed. Although adventure mode is less important in this ranking, it's still worth it to point out that only a whopping 1 out of 11 worlds has water for you to boost your sea flora with. The fact that you need such a niche and specific situation for this plant to even justify its sun cost detracts from its versatility and overall utility. Responses to the poll suggested that its sun cost was too high for its little damage and lack of versatility particularly in the adventure and arena modes due to its niche ability, which we've explained already. This is one of the other plants on the list I'm not too familiar with, so let me know if this placement is valid. Heathseeker is an instant plant that's kind of like a grape shot, but replace the grapes with homing missiles. Remove the 3x3 explosion and make it cheaper. Considering grape shot is disgustingly overpowered as it is, by proxy this plant is equally if not more overpowered. Its projectiles are also useful for breaking gravestones, making it even better in Ancient Egypt, Dark Ages, and any arena or Penny's Pursuit events that have gravestones too. Another notable Dark Ages interaction is that its projectiles can't be deflected by the Jester, another small but very helpful feature. Heathseeker is just a really great plan at cleaning up or damaging zombies and objects across the lawn. Your survey responses supported this, saying that Heathseeker is just overall a safe pick across all the game modes, essentially the opposite of Sea Flora, explaining why they're both number 5 on opposite lists. There's not really much else to say about this plan, it's just a really solid damage dealing instant plan. If I made this ranking purely on your form votes, Skeddy Shroom would by far be ranked as the number one worst plan on this list. However, I felt the need to override your votes with my personal opinion, simply because I don't think Skeddy Shroom is that bad compared to the other plants we'll get to later. That's not to say Skeddy Shroom isn't abysmal, especially in Penny's Pursuit and Arena, which we care about most, it's just that the upcoming plants are even worse in terms of abilities and statistics. Anyway, for now, this is Skeddy Shroom's spot, so let's discuss him in particular. Skeddy Shroom is a 25 sunk cost plant that acts like a posh room without the range limitation, but instead hides when a zombie gets within the 8 tiles that surround him. So basically, he's exactly what he was like in the first game. This is clearly an issue that impacts his performance in a sequel, because Plants vs Zombies 1 and 2 are very different games. Games. And Plants vs Zombies 2 has a lot of power creep in both plants and zombies that makes Skeddy practically obsolete. I feel like Skeddy isn't even that bad of a plant, it's just that he's been plonked in a game where he doesn't fit in at all. At the end of the day though, Skeddy's plant food ability automatically disallows him from being any further up on the worst plants list. It's like the one redeeming factor of this plant. Basically, it's like Pushroom's plant food, but instead of activating all Skeddy shrooms on the screen, it just activates those around him. Given the lack of a short range like Postrooms, this makes Skeddy Shroom's plant food pretty good. I do believe that the overwhelming hate for Skeddy Shroom isn't fully justified in the context of this ranking, 
and a lot of it may come down to its controversial graphics and animations, nostalgia baiting, and maybe even some recency bias. None of which have anything to do with gameplay effectiveness, which is what we're here to analyze. And as I said, even though you guys voted him higher, I think some of the plants coming up are so, so, so much worse. Torchwood has definitely earned his spot on this list. This is one that I strongly agree with you guys on. I'm pretty sure we all know who Torchwood is, but just in case you don't, Torchwood is a 175 sunk loss plant that ignites all P projectiles that travel through it. When ignited, P's deal double the damage and gain some splash. Torchwood is super strong in all game modes, but its synergy with some of the top tier pennies pursued in arena mode plants makes it super useful just by association. Usually I don't like to rank plants based on their specific combos with other plants, but like the shadow plants, Torchwood is designed specifically for use with P plants, so it's only fair here. I don't want to reveal what particular overpowered P plant he mixes well with, because we'll find out later as we ascend the list. Torchwood just feels super satisfying and powerful to use as his damage boost and added splash damage can shred through a lot of the tanky zombies in large groups that Penny's Pursuit and Arena are known for. On top of all of this, he also received a buff a while ago that made him better up close by increasing his health, burning zombies that eat him, and even adding a hot date-esque death ability that damages all zombies in his lane when he's destroyed. Way to make a strong plant even stronger. And the cherry on top is that you can get this guy for free after 7 days of playing the game. You guys mentioned in your responses that Torchwood was your pick because of the high DPS you can attain with him, especially when plant food boosted, which is very very true. Now, after glazing Torchwood for so long, I reckon it's time to look at another shite plant, shall we? Ah, Tomb Tangler. I remember when this guy was launched, the fanbase was furious. Even I was, I made a whole video about that update. At least they fixed up his cursed sun cost. I have a bittersweet relationship with this plant though. On one hand, he's pretty bad, but on the other hand, he reminds me of the period where I started to properly get back into Plants vs Zombies 2. And of course, my channel started to get a lot of traction. I think the version of the game where they added Tomb Tangler is the same version that I played my one seed slot challenge on, and that video is well over one and a half million views. That's actually crazy, thank you all so much. Anyway, we got a bit sidetracked there. Tomb Tangler is a wall plant, I, I think, kind of. It can only be planted on gravestones. That's the first problem, but I'll finish explaining it first. When you plant him, he destroys the gravestone that was there, and then sits and acts as a kind of walnut kind of thing. He also emits a fog in the tile in front of him that slows zombies, and also has a 50% chance to pull a zombie every 5-10 to 10 seconds it's standing in the fog. Pulling a zombie is like what the Grim Rose does, it just insta-kills it. The main issue with this plant is how unnecessary it is. The fact that it can only be planted on gravestones or other board objects makes its use already very obscure, and everything else about the plant feels so RNG based and inconsistent. Like why make the pulling concept so convoluted? Instead of giving it a probability of pulling a zombie every certain time interval, which is just really complicated for no reason, why not just let it pull the first few zombies that enter its fog or something? I don't know, this plant is just really strange and weird. The fact that it's so niche drags it down a lot because even though these are just ranking videos, they're also meant to inform new players on which plants to go for first. As for Tomb Tangler, there's really not much reason to go out of your way to unlock this guy. There's so many better sediums that aren't restricted to being planted on grid objects and are far more versatile options in the player's plant arsenal. Your poll votes reflected these same arguments, with some of you suggesting that Boing Setta is a far better pick for a sedium to remove grid objects. To that I say, you're absolutely right. It literally just wipes out every object on the screen. And that's another point against Tomb Tangler, the fact that it doesn't synergize well with plants like Boing Setta or high damage plants in general. To get a lot of Tomb Tanglers down, you need a lot of gravestones. So using plants that destroy gravestones directly or indirectly, which, let's be honest, is probably most of the plants in the game, limits how many Tomb Tanglers you can use to begin with, which just makes him a waste of a seed slot. Lots of your answers also indicated that Tomb Tangler is especially bad in Adventure and Arena due to the lack of grid items in either mode. I actually kind of feel sorry for Tomb Tangler, I think it's a pretty interesting plant conceptually and visually, but from being given a weird sun cost to being really underwhelming at launch, it feels like PopCap has just treated him really badly. And unfortunately, even after being buffed, Tomb Tangler still finds himself on this list. Okay, so I'm really confident about placing Impair at number 3 best. That's because it's one of the plants on this list that I'm really familiar with since I unlocked it quite a while back and personally use it a lot. Also, I'm gonna refer to him as Impair from now on because saying the two syllables in Impair every time will get really annoying. Impair is a zero sunk cost plant that when eaten turns the zombies that ate it into an imp. If you use it again on the imp zombie, it will shard itself to death, just like the effect of a chili bean or a taco bell binge. On its own, Impair is 
really good. I mean, it's free, so there's really no downside to using it. You can take out tanky threats like knights and blockheads with just two of these guys. But what makes Impair so great is its ability to absolutely clean house in booster armors. Impair's plant food ability imps a bunch of zombies on the screen. Combine this with the fact that it's free and its low reload makes it highly spammable, and you have a plant that just instantly annihilates whole hordes of zombies. This is particularly overpowered in Arena and Penny's Pursuit, where the zombies have levels and their health is artificially increased, since Impair's ability doesn't actually care about this. No matter if the zombie is level 1 or level 10, it'll always be turned into an imp on the first Impair, and deleted on the second Impair. This makes Impair an absolute powerhouse in booster armor events. So yeah, Impair is a very good plant that can counter the artificial zombie inflation in Arena and Penny's Pursuit, the two modes that we care about particularly in the making of this list. Well deserved, Impair. Electricity is another plant that could be good, but its stats are severely undertuned for some reason. Electricity has a few abilities. First, it has an attack similar to Fat Beat, where it deals damage to zombies in pulses that radiate in the tiles surrounding. However, this attack is absolutely abysmal. Whenever I use this guy, I feel like his attacks do no damage. And there's good reason for that, since according to the Plants vs Zombies wiki, these attacks are the least damaging in the entire game, dealing a whopping 3 damage per burst. For reference, a basic zombie has 190 health. Some quick calculations will show that the electricity will need to attack a basic zombie 63 times just to kill it. So yeah, this attack basically does nothing and might as well not exist. As a side note, what's up with PopCap giving plants like this really poor damage? Fat Beat is another example. Maybe they don't want to repeat the carnage from the original game caused by Gloomshroom. Anyway, Electricity's actually somewhat useful ability only comes after it's eaten. When eaten, the Electricity will electrocute the zombie that ate it and zap surrounding zombies for a lot more damage. Now, Electricity sounds pretty decent for an, I don't know, 25 or 50 sun cost plant maybe, but no. Do you want to know how much this thing actually costs? 125 sun. That's a ripoff if I've ever seen one. Explodonaut is basically electricity, but better in every way, yet it only costs 50 sun, less than half of electricity. I mean, this plant has so much potential, but PopCap just fumbled it so hard. If it did an actually noticeable amount of damage in its attacks and costed less sun, then we're onto a pretty decent plant. But PoopCrap decided to just annihilate this plant by dialing down basically all of its stats, giving it a ridiculous sun cost. All of you basically agreed here that it's outclassed by similar plants simply because it does like no damage. The plant that's number one worst on this list suffers a nearly identical dilemma where its usefulness is ruined by unnecessarily low stats and a high sun cost. You probably already know who that is. But first, we need to take a look at number two best. Okay, so we all saw this one coming. At number 2 we have a tie between Mega Gatling P and P Vine. Why is it a tie? Well, it's kind of like a chicken or the egg scenario. Both plants are very strong, but especially broken when combined. These are the plants that Torchwood synergizes with that I alluded to in its entry. However, Torchwood isn't this high up the list because these two plants can fare really well on their own, while Torchwood is kind of dependent on them to be good. So anyway, let's get into Mega Gatling P and P Vine. Mega Gatling P is a pea shooter plant that shoots 4 peas at a time. However, this isn't what makes it great. It also has a chance to spontaneously plant food itself. I'm pretty sure this is the only plant in the game that can actually do that. His plant food ability is similar to Reg P Shooter's plant food, but after it ends, he's upgraded and an extra P is added to each of his shots, totaling the 5 P's. P Vine, on the other hand, is a vine plant that boosts P plants that are placed on it by a damage multiplier of 1.5 times. He also shoots some P's of his own. So, why are these plants so great together? Well, P Vine's damage multiplier complements Mega Gatling P's attacks perfectly due to the high P counts. Moreover, when combined with Torchwood and Appeasement, that multiplies the Mega Gatling P's damage by 8 times, which is just insane. These two plants are also the only plants whose plant food abilities can actually be boosted by appeasement. This next part is specific to Peavine. When Peavine is planted on Torchwood, you can get insane damage since Peavine multiplies Torchwood's damage multiplier. If you're not following, all this basically means Mega Gatling P, Peavine, and Torchwood are like a holy trinity that absolutely shreds through most zombies. Even in Arena and Penny's Pursuit, where zombies have artificially inflated health, due to zombie levels. Your sentiments on these two plants mirrored mine. Your sponsor has mentioned that they can achieve the highest DPS in the game. I'm not sure if that's actually true, but let's go with it. And that they're especially great in Arena. I assume because more sun is usually available because this setup could be quite expensive. The reason I didn't include appeasement on this list is because to an even further extent than Torchwood, you can do just fine without appeasement. Mega Gatling P and P Vine are like the fundamental components of this strategy. 
While Torchwood is important, but not a necessity, an appeasement is more of an added bonus. Especially with the limited seed slots in Arena, it can be difficult to bring all four of these guys, so I usually just bin appeasement since it's the least important to the strategy. The only real flaw of Mega Gatling P and Peavine is the Jester Zombie, but apart from that, this Joey can wreak havoc on most pennies pursued in Arena levels. I remember when Vampacini released and I got to first try it out, my reaction was, is that all this thing really does? Seriously, what's the purpose of this plan? It's basically a walnut with extra steps that cost double the sun. That's just sad, I almost feel sorry for this plan. Even the Plants vs Zombies 2 wiki objectively advises you to not use this plan. It just feels like this plant had potential, but PopCap gave it really bad stats. His damage isn't even noticeable, just take a look at Zack Scott Games' reaction to this plan. That is... I guess damaging the zombie? It's a cool looking plant, but I'm having a hard time figuring out what to do with it, honestly. Like, how useful is this? That's the perfect way to sum up this plant. I guess it does something? This isn't even exclusive to its damage, since its health doesn't justify picking it over a regular old walnut or any other wall in the game for that matter. However, its sun cost and it would still just be a very meh plant. This is not to mention its plant food ability, which is just as bad as everything else about this plant. According to your poll feedback, this plant is especially atrocious in Penny's Pursuit and Arena, the modes it comes from, because low damage becomes even more apparent with high level zombies. Leveling up the Vampurcini doesn't really help it that much either. The sentiment that it's a worse walnut was also mentioned in the form. If any plant is in need for a buff, this is it right here. Your poll votes would have placed this plant around the 4th or 3rd worst spot, and I gotta say, I disagree with that. I moved this plant up to number 1 from my personal opinion, which is the correct opinion. That being, this plant is complete ass. It's literally a 100 sun walnut, I don't know what else to say. At least plants like Scaredy Shroom, which you guys voted for more, cost less sun so they're lower risk, but Vampacini is comparatively a much bigger investment at 100 sun. So yeah, Vampacini, I'm sorry but you're the worst CDM in the game, if not one of the worst plants in general in my opinion. Poop is truly the best CDM in Plants vs Zombies 2. I never put much thought into this plant, but whoever you are who submitted this magnificent CDM, you have opened my eyes to the sheer power of poop. I'll be sure to use poop in my future arena and Penny's Pursuit setups. Okay, jokes aside, it's Pokra. Is this really a surprise to anyone? Your votes for Pokra across all three game modes won by Landslide. Pokra isn't just one of the best CDMs, it's one of the best plants in general. Pokra is a 125 sun cost close range plant that hits zombies within two tiles in front of her. After four of these attacks, she launches a spike that pierces through zombies all the way down her lane. By the way, every attack I've mentioned so far also induces a Stolia cloud on the zombies that are hit. So Pokra is kind of like a bonk toy with extra range that does way more damage, merged with laser beam and infinite Stolias, all for 175 sun. That is just the definition of broken. While making this list, I realized how much a sun cost can make or break a plant. In the case of Pokra, its sun cost combined with its low C reload makes it spammable and extremely overpowered, while plants like Vampacini and Electricity are destroyed by an unnecessarily high sun cost in return for weak abilities. Oh yeah, and Pokra's plant food ability actually launches several of these piercing spikes, but even without that ability, Pokra would still be just as good. Just the fact that Pokra does so much damage while slowing zombies so that they take more damage for a longer time, just makes it an absolute powerhouse of a damage dealer. This, in combination with its piercing spike combo attack, makes it well equipped to wipe out the large hordes of tanky zombies often seen in Arena and Penny's Pursuit. It's also broken adventure mode, where one or two columns of them can often solo whole levels across all worlds. Your poll responses heavily support its placement up in the number one spot. One of you said it's like Bonk Choy on crack, but I'd argue it's Bonk Choy on crack, ecstasy, and meth at the same time. The only complaint any of you had about Pokra was its limited range, but Technically, it doesn't even have limited range since its spike attack hits the whole lane. That's the thing about Pokra, it basically has no weakness, and I haven't even mentioned the fact that two of them can infinitely defeat Gargantuas. One of you also brought up the fact that Pokra is quite good at dealing with the gimmicks in Penny's Pursuit, such as flower lines and endangered plants, since it can protect zombies from going anywhere near them, which is also very true. So in summary, Pokra is OP and you should get it if you want to break all three game modes. So, did you agree with this list? Is there anything you would change? If so, drop your thoughts in the comments, and I'll see you next time.